Uh, good morning and thank you very much for attending this meeting of the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. Uh, first and foremost, allow me also to join my dear colleague Haulin in expressing our thanks to the two co-chairs. Uh, and of course, uh, to a special gratitude uh, to Ms. Sonia Fang, Chairwoman of the Huawei Technologies, for hosting us here in Hong Kong. I would like to say that this shows again how committed uh, your company, uh, Madam Sun, is uh, to bringing digital, to bridging digital divides. And we have seen this in uh, Huawei's efforts to promote ICT-based education in many countries in the world. And I would say also in emergency situations, I remember seeing your efforts in restoring the networks after the devastating earthquake in Nepal in 2014. 15. We are deeply grateful uh, also to you, uh, Mr. President, uh, Paul Kagame, uh, for your leadership, and of course uh, to Mr. Carlos Slim, President of the Carlos Slim Foundation. We, the two agencies, uh, the uh, ITU and UNESCO, have an excellent partnership, um, and we have forged uh, through the years, uh, also with the other UN agencies, members of the Broadband Commission, a strong commitment to promote ICTs for sustainable development. As you know, next week, UNESCO is hosting our flagship Mobile Learning Week, organized this year in partnership with United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and ITU on the theme Education in Emergencies and Crisis. On 24th March, UNESCO and ITU are holding the Mobile Learning Wing Policy Forum on harnessing e-skills and mobile learning for inclusive sustainable development for which I am very grateful. Last year's team was dedicated to, bringing, to bridging the digital divide and we invited United Nations women to join us in leading this mobile learning week. I believe the framework for all of our work is quite clear. It is the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It is the 17 new sustainable development goals. This is the compass setting of all our efforts to advance the human rights and dignity of every woman and man as a transformational force for societies, for economies, for the planet. The same spirit, I believe, underpins the work of this commission to ensure the digital revolution is a development revolution, a revolution for human rights to promote technological breakthroughs as development breakthroughs. The Sustainable Development Goals may look like a set of idealistic objectives on paper, but I believe they are not. They are about concrete change for the benefit of all. They provide a toolbox to map, measure, and advance together in partnership. We see ICT-specific targets in four of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. There are 38 targets whose achievement will depend upon the universal and affordable access to ICT and broadband. To move forward, we know the divides we need to bridge, and Howlin just mentioned some of them. Six billion people without high-speed broadband, 3.9 billion people without internet access, two billion people without a mobile phone. Divides of access are exacerbated by divides in skills, in services, in applications, in local and multilingual content, made worse by gender divides holding by girls and women. These are, I believe, the stakes of our mission. Yesterday, with John Galvin of Intel, we chaired the new working group on education to explore the education we need to foster a new generation of digital citizens with the right skills to engage in society, in the economy. We need to harness the power of new technologies to enhance quality and widen access. This calls for new curricula, new approaches across the education sector. And I draw this to your attention here, the recent Huawei report on the role of ICT in realizing education uh, for all by 2030. 
This is essential to reach everyone. And I come back to the idea, especially girls and women. There is today a global gender gap of 11% in access to the internet. This rises to 29% in least developed countries. We need smart technologies to advance sustainable development goal five, to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls, including the target to enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular ICT, to promote the empowerment of all women and girls. Again, access and coverage are essential, but not enough to close the gender gap. We must boast the skills, languages, incentives, resources. In this spirit, yesterday, once again, we launched the outcome report of the Working Group on Digital Gender Divide, co-chaired by GSMA and UNESCO, and I thank particularly Mats Grenrit for his leadership. We will present this morning this report. It sets out concrete recommendations to bridge the gender gap in internet and broadband access and use. And I believe this indeed is the key point. If we do not invest directly to tackle digital divides, we run the risk of widening them. All this, dear commissioners, once again, highlights the importance of partnership. And in this spirit, usually, as Howlin said, spring meetings are very productive. I look forward to our discussions today. Thank you for your attention.